students watching, my name is Miss Howe. Welcome so much to first grade. I'm excited for the things that we'll have a chance to learn together. We're going to learn scriptures together that you can share with your family and those around you. We'll also learn many stories from God's word, stories that will help you grow closer to him. We'll also learn songs that you can sing and share wherever you go. Welcome, we're glad you're here. Students watching, welcome to our first, first grade Bible lesson. I'm excited about the Bible things that we're going to get to do together. In fact, we're going to be spending a lot of time learning good Bible songs and learning Bible verses, and then I'll share with you many stories from God's Word. Now, as we begin together, there are some things that I'm going to ask our students watching to do, which are the same things I'm going to ask our boys and girls in the classroom. As I teach you new songs, I want you to be ready to join me in motions and singing those words along with me. As we learn new Bible verses together from God's Word, I'll also ask you to join us as we say them together and learn them. Now, every Bible lesson will begin by doing something. We will say the pledge to the American flag and then we'll sing a patriotic song. Now, in this lesson, we'll do something just a little bit different. I will say the pledge by myself, but I'll ask our students watching and boys and girls in the classroom to show attention and respect to our flag and listen as I say those words. Now in a moment, I'm going to ask everyone to stand and students watching, you be ready to join us too. All right, students watching, boys and girls in our classroom, let's stand. Oh, I like that fast obedience. The next word I'll say is the word attention. When I say the word attention, that means you'll face toward the flag attention. Nice. Fast work, students watching. The next word I'll tell you is the word salute. Salute means take your right hand and put it over your heart, so salute. The last word I'll say is the word pledge. Now, normally when I say pledge, students watching and boys and girls in the classroom will say the pledge together, but I'll say the pledge by myself for this lesson. Just listen to each of those words. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Now you can put your hands by your side. We'll still stand up straight and tall. After we say our pledge, we'll also sing a patriotic song. Students watching, you join us as we sing our patriotic song, My Country Tis of Thee. My country tis of the sweet land of liberty of the I sing. Land where my fathers died, land of the pilgrims pride, from every mountainside let freedom ring. Students watching, boys and girls in the classroom, that was a good start, but let's try it again. Let's sing as many words as we can of My Country Tis of Thee. My country tis of the sweet land of liberty of the I sing. Land where my fathers died, land of the pilgrims pride. From every mountainside let freedom ring. Now stay standing and we're going to do something a little bit extra special together. In a moment, we're going to bow our heads and close our eyes and we're going to say together the Lord's Prayer. The Lord's Prayer is exactly from God's Word. And in this prayer, Jesus shares with us a good way for us to talk to God. So students watching, boys and girls in this classroom, let's bow our heads and close our eyes and we'll say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. What a nice start. You can have a seat and Savvy, you can place that flag on our counter before you sit down. Now, I'm also going to be sharing with you some very special things about God and his word. Kobe, you can just have a seat. I want to share with you about God and how God wrote his word. 
we know that God's word is called the Bible. And for God to be able to write the Bible, he told some men who loved him very much exactly what word to write in the Bible. They wrote down what God told them to. And we know that every single word in the Bible is true. Now, I'm going to ask you some questions about the Bible in just a moment, and I'll give you the answer I'd like you to tell back to me. So students watching, you'll be listening as well as our boys and girls in this classroom. When I ask you the question, who wrote the Bible? You will say, God. Who wrote the Bible class? God. God. Good job. When I ask you the question, is all of the Bible true? Every word, you will say, yes, every word is true. How did God, or is, is all of the Bible true? Every word class? Yes, yes. every word is true. When I ask the question, how did God write the Bible, you will say, he had some men who loved him very much to write the Bible. How did God write the Bible class? He had some men who loved him very much to write the Bible. Nice job with those questions. Now, every lesson that we have for Bible, we're going to pause and we're going to take just a moment of time and we're going to talk to God through prayer. Many times I'll call up students in this classroom to come and join me and they can share with me something that they're thankful for. And they can also share with me something that they'd like to tell God about. Now, boys and girls in this classroom and students watching, any time we have prayer time, even if it isn't your turn to come up to the front of the room, there's always something I want you to do. I always want you to talk to God in your hearts. You know, God tells us that he hears our prayers and he's ready to answer them. God wants us to talk to him and ask him for things so that he can bless us. Now, in this lesson, I'm going to talk to God by myself, but I want you to be ready to talk to God in your hearts. Now, in a moment, I want you to do something. I want you to bow your heads, and this is what that means. You'll just take your head and you'll look down towards your lap. So bow your heads. Nice, I still see backs right against the back of your chair. We wanna sit up straight and tall and give respect to God. Now, the next thing I'd like you to do is close your eyes. So go ahead and close your eyes. Students watching, you join right along with us. Now, we don't have to close our eyes or bow our heads to talk to God, but it's just a good way for us to focus on Him. Remember, you talk to God in your hearts and we'll talk to God out loud. Dear Lord, thank you so much for the wonderful day that you've given to us. Lord, I thank you for our students watching who've been able to join us and also the boys and girls in this classroom. Lord, I know that today is a day of new beginnings. I pray that everyone, whether our students here in this room or those who are watching, that they will be ready to listen to directions and that they will obey the very first time. Help us as I share things from God's word and we learn new things together that we'll do our very best. We'll try even when it's hard and Lord, thank you that you bless us each and every day. I pray for our moms and dads that they'll have a good day today and bless our hands as they work. In Jesus' name, amen. Excellent. Students watching our boys and girls in the classroom, they sat right up straight and tall when I said amen, and they were ready to get right back to work as we learn and do new things together. Now, some of the songs that we're going to be doing are songs that you may remember from before. So we're going to try each of these songs together the first time. But students watching and boys and girls in this classroom, I'm going to ask you to do something. Every time I sing a song and there's motions to go with a song, I want you to try those motions with me. So you try the motions and also try the words to our song. Let's have everyone stand. Oh, that was pretty fast. Why don't we try again? You can have a seat. Students watching, you be ready to stand too. Stand. Oh, that was very speedy, especially Victoria. Let's sing together our song, Jesus Loves Me. Join me with motions and words. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to Him belong, they are weak but He is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me. Oh, students watching, I think you sounded just as good as our boys and girls in the classroom. And you know what I got? So many smiles because it's fun to sing about God and how he loves us so much. Have a seat and we're ready to sing another song together. It's the song, the B-I-B-L-E. 
The B-I-B-L-E Yes, that's the book for me I stand the word on the word of God The B-I-B-L-E Bible! Oh, that was a good start, have a seat. Let's do it again. Students watching you join us. I want to hear the word Bible at the end. The B-I-B-L-E Yes, that's the book for me I stand the word on the word of God have a seat and students watching who did we say wrote the bible and who wrote the bible savvy god god did why don't you stand to answer god god did write the bible we just learned about that now we're ready to sing our next song together and it tells how jesus loves all of us jesus loves the little children join me students watching jesus loves the little children all the children of the world red brown yellow black and white all are precious in its sight jesus loves the little children of the world let's stand up students watching join us let's sing that again make sure you're doing the motions and singing the word jesus loves the little children all the children of the world red brown yellow black and white all are precious in Jesus loves the little children of the world. Nice job with motions. Emory, you can have a seat. Well, at the very beginning, we found out that I was going to teach you many verses from God's Word. Well, beginning in this lesson, we're going to learn together from the book of John a brand new set of verses. Now, some of these verses may be familiar to our students watching and boys and girls in this classroom. But I want you to listen as I say our new verses that we're going to work on together. John 3, 14 through 19. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation that light is come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. Now, as I read those verses to you, did you recognize John 3, 16? In that verse, God tells of his great love for us, how he chose to send his son to take our punishment for sin, so one day we could live forever in heaven with God. Now, at the very beginning of our verses, there's a story that's told, and it's a story of something that happened thousands of years ago. You see, God's people, the Jewish people, he had had them go into the wilderness, and there in the wilderness, God's people did something very sad. They began to complain about the blessings that God had given to us. You know, when we complain about things, we're really saying, God, I don't like what you've given to me. And instead, we should be thankful for the things that we have. But as the people began to complain, God had to do something. Complaining is sin, and sin is all the bad things we do, and God cannot allow sin to continue. So he sent a punishment into where the people lived. And the punishment was that many of them got sick and some died. But Moses, who was God's leader, he said, he went to God and he prayed and he said, God, what can I do to help the people get better? And God gave him some specific directions and Moses followed them. And as Moses followed God's directions, he told the people, I want you to look at this special metal serpent that God told me to make. And if you look, you will live because you believe and you do what God has told you to do. Well, in these verses, Jesus said, as that happened thousands of years ago to this day, if you want to live forever in heaven with me, just look to Jesus and believe and you will have that forever home. Sadly, at the end of our verses, though, it tells us that even though Jesus was ready to share, even though he was ready to take our punishment for sin, many people didn't accept Jesus as their own Savior. But I'm glad that God gives us the choice that we can choose to live forever with him. 
Well, I'm going to say those verses again. And as I say them, I'm going to do some motions as well. As I do those motions, I want our students watching and boys and girls in this classroom to listen to every single word that I say. And I want you to try to do the motions with me. John 3, 14 through 19. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation that light is come into the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. John 3, 14 through 19. Everyone stand, students watching you join us. Oh, that was still a little slow. Have a seat, fast feet, fast obedience. Stand up, love it, Victoria, Hayden and Savvy. Students watching you join our boys and girls in this classroom. We're going to try every word and do every motion. Now, I'll begin by saying John 3, 14 through 19, then it will be your turn to say where it's found in the Bible, then we'll say the words of the verse together. John 3, 14 through 19. John 3, 14 through 19. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not, not condemned, condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation, that light is come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. John 3, 14 through 19. You can have a seat. Students watching and boys and girls in this classroom, what a good start for the first time to say these verses. We'll continue in the next several lessons to say these verses and we'll learn these important verses together. We're ready now to have a song we're going to learn together. I want us just to listen to the words of this song and watch as I do the motions to our song, Behold, behold. Listen to what God has for us. Students watching, I know you did just as well as our boys and girls in this classroom. You did a great job with emotions. Are you ready to sing this song together? Everyone stand, students watching, you join us. Let's sing and do the motions. Behold, behold. Behold, behold. I stand at the door and knock, knock, knock. Behold, behold. I stand at the door and knock, knock, knock. If any girl hear my voice. Students watching and boys and girls in our classroom, what I love about that song is it tells us that Jesus is always ready to come in and take over in our lives. I hope you've already made that decision. Now in just a moment, I'm going to begin a very special part of our Bible time. 
every single time we have a Bible lesson, I'm going to share with you a story that is exactly from God's Word. And I'm going to share what God has for you. Now, no matter what I'm teaching, I do want you sitting up straight and tall and ready to listen to what I have to teach to you. But especially during our Bible story, because I'm sharing with you God's story. Students watching and boys and girls in this classroom, we want to sit up straight and tall and we want to be ready for what God has for us. Well, I want to share with you about a very special place. And the very special place I want to share with you about is a place called heaven. Now, as we read God's word, we find out that God has many things to say about heaven. Some of the things God tells us about heaven are things that are there in heaven. And some are things that God says, I'm not going to have in heaven. Well, you can see by my first beautiful picture that heaven is a beautiful place. And God tells us some special things that heaven is made of. For one thing, God tells us that heaven's foundations are made of special gemstones. The gates to get inside the city of heaven are made of big pearls, and there are 12 of those gates to get in. God also tells us that heaven is a very large place. It is four square, and four square means it is as big as it is wide as it is tall. So heaven is a very big and a very beautiful place. Well, there is something, though, that God tells us that is not in heaven. And you might be looking at this thinking, Miss How, surely you're mistaken. You must mean this something that is, that is in heaven. But, you know, what you see this picture is a church. And a church is important here on this earth. Because a church is the place on this earth that we can gather together and there we can worship God. But God doesn't have a church building in heaven because... God lives in heaven and he is there all of the time for us to be able to worship him. So there are no church buildings in heaven because we can worship God at all times. My next picture is another surprising thing that you might again think to yourself, Miss How, what, what about that? Why are there no lamps in heaven or candles or flashlights or the sun or the moon and the stars? Is heaven a dark place? You know, it is not. Instead, the Bible tells us that heaven is a place of light, but we don't need a flashlight to get light in heaven or a candle or a lamp or even the sun. Because God tells us that Jesus himself is the light that is in heaven. So instead of a place of darkness, heaven is a place of great light because Jesus is there. Now, this next picture tells me something I am glad is not going to be in heaven. Do you see a picture of that little girl? Do you know what just happened? She asked her mom if she could have a cookie, but it was right before supper. And so her mom said, no, she can't have a cookie. But instead of this little girl telling her mom, yes, I don't need a cookie. Instead, let me help you with a job. This little girl got very angry at her mother and she stomped her feet and she crossed her arms and she began to cry because her mother said no. Oh, students watching and boys and girls in the classroom, I hope that is something you never do. Sometimes moms and dads and teachers have to say no to the boys and girls around them. And when we say no, you need to smile and obey right away and don't be like this little girl. Well, my next picture shows something else that I don't like either and I'm glad is not in heaven. You see, this man decided he needed some extra money for his family. And instead of going out and getting money the way that we should, he decided he was going to go to the bank and take somebody else's money. Well, we call that stealing. When you take something that doesn't belong to you, you have stolen. And I think a lot of times we think stealing is just when we take money that doesn't belong to us. But did you know that you could also steal time? When you don't do the right thing in the classroom or don't do the right thing at home and mom and dad or the teacher have to stop their jobs and make you do what is right. Well, didn't you just steal time from your family and from your classmates to be able to do their job? Or maybe you might see that a friend has a special toy and they're not watching and you decide you would like that special toy. Well, if you take it and keep it, then you have taken something that doesn't belong to you and you have stolen. And I'm glad there's going to be no stealing in heaven. Well, my next picture also shows something that I'm glad is not going to be in heaven. 
Our first picture shows boys and girls in a classroom just like we're in right now. And just the night before, the teacher told everyone in her class, I want you to go home and learn your combinations. Well, you know what the little girl did? She obeyed her teacher. Instead of watching television or playing outside, she took some time and she went over her combinations. But the little boy who sat behind her, oh, he decided he would rather watch television and play outside. And when he came to school the next morning, he didn't know what his teacher said he needed to know. So instead of being honest with his teacher, he decided to try to look and take the answers of the little girl who sat in front of him. Well, that sounds a lot like stealing, doesn't it? We say that he was cheating because he stole an answer that didn't belong to him. Well, my next picture says something else I'm very glad is not in heaven. These two are brothers and families should get along. Brothers should get along with brothers and sisters and brothers should get along together and sisters and sisters. But instead, these boys began to get upset with each other and they began to fight with their words and they began to argue. And then those words turned to actions and they began to fight with their fists. Oh, students watching and boys and girls in our classroom, I hope that you never fight with your words or fight with your hands, but instead you get along with those who are around you and you are sweet toward each other. Well, our little girl who got angry, our man who stole what didn't belong to him, our little boy who is cheating and those brothers who are fighting, they all are doing something that you can see is in the middle of my card. It's a little word, but oh, it has big consequences. It is the word sin. And right in there in that dark heart, you can see sin, but I'm glad to say there is no sin in heaven. Well, my next picture shows something else sad that I'm glad is not in heaven. This boy and this girl, they went to the park to play and their mom said, come home before it's dark. But they were having so much fun. They forgot about their mom's words. And when it got dark, they realized they were lost. And so they got sad and they began to cry. But in heaven, God tells us that there are no tears. In fact, if we start to cry in heaven, God says, I'll wipe those tears away from your eyes. Well, in our next picture, this little boy, he's sick. Oh, he has to stay in bed. He had to go to the doctor and get some medicine. And our picture right beside that shows some people who used to be alive on this earth, but now their bodies are no longer living. There is no sickness in heaven. There is no death in heaven. There is no sorrow in heaven because heaven is a place of joy and is a place of life. Well, those are some things that are not in heaven, but I'm happy to see some things that will be in heaven. One of the first things I see in heaven are those beautiful buildings. Those are called mansions. And Jesus, after he lived here on this earth, before he went up to heaven, he said, I'm going to go and make mansions for all of those who trust in me as their own personal savior while they live here on earth. There's also a beautiful river. It's called the river of life. And the river of life flows underneath the very throne of God. Do you see that tree? That tree is called the tree of life. And God tells us in his word that every single month, a brand new fruit will grow on that tree. Maybe some fruits we have had before and maybe some brand new fruits we've never had. I also see some beautiful streets and those streets are made of gold. Here on this earth, our streets aren't very clean and aren't very nice, but God says in my heaven, I'm going to make the purest, most beautiful gold and I'll make my streets of that. Well, my next picture shows something else you'll see in heaven and it's angels. Did you know angels? We don't know what they look like, but we know their job. Their job is to worship God all of the time. And next to the angels, can you see some people? Those people used to live right here on this earth, but they are no longer alive. But they did something. While they lived here on earth, they took Jesus as their own personal savior and now they have a forever home in heaven. And I also see on my picture who those angels and those people are worshiping. It's God. God lives in heaven and heaven is his home. Well, there's someone else who is in heaven and it is Jesus himself. Jesus is the one who took our punishment for sin so we could have that forever home in heaven. And do you see that wonderful book next to Jesus? That book is called the Lamb's Book of Life. And the Lamb's Book of Life is the place where all of those who trust in Jesus as their own personal savior, their names are written. It can never be erased or taken away. 
you know, students watching and boys and girls in this classroom, I know my name has been written in the Lamb's Book of Life to you. Through the next several lessons, we're going to find out how you can know for sure you have that wonderful home in heaven. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes. Dear Lord, thank you so much for this wonderful story we were able to learn together. Thank you for giving us that forever home in heaven for those who trust in you as their Savior while they live here on earth. Lord, I pray that today our actions would be pleasing to you. Bless us as we go throughout the rest of our day. In Jesus' name, amen. Stand up, students watching you. Join us as well. Let's sing together our song, All Things Bright and Beautiful. Each little flower that opens, each little bird that sings, God made their glowing colors, He made their tiny wings. Yes, all things bright and beautiful, all creatures great and small, and all things wise and wonderful, the Lord God made them all. You can have a seat. Students watching, I'm so glad you were able to join us and I'm looking forward to finding out more about God's beautiful home. Students watching, for the next few moments, we're going to take a little bit of time and just talk about some habits. Now a habit is something that you do without even thinking at all. Sometimes our habits are good and sometimes our habits are bad. We want to make sure that as we begin our first grade school year together, that we have good habits that we do together so that we can learn and listen very easily. One of the first things I want to talk to you about is a good habit with the way that you sit. Now, students watching, your chair might look just a little bit different from my chair, but I want you to see and watch how I sit in a chair because that's the way I want you to sit as well. Whenever you sit, when it's time to do school, I want you to sit up straight and tall. Because when you sit up straight and tall, it's easy for your eyes to be able to see the teacher, which means your ears can listen and that means that you can learn. So notice how I'm sitting up straight and tall in my chair and students watching, I hope that you are too. I know our boys and girls in this classroom, they look good as well. The next thing I want you to notice are my feet. I have my feet right on the floor. And that again helps me to have good posture. Posture is the way I sit and stand and we wanna make sure that we keep our bodies healthy by having good posture. Now I want you to notice my hands. Right now I haven't asked my hands to do any work so they're just resting in my lap. But they're ready. Whenever the teacher might have a job, those hands are ready to go to do the job that she asks you to do. So my back is straight so that my ears can listen and my eyes can watch. My feet are still on the ground so that I have that good posture for a healthy body. And then my hands are resting but ready, ready to do any job that we've been given. Why don't we take just a moment and why don't we practice? Now students watching, boys and girls in this classroom, probably pretty often you'll hear me say these words. I'll say the words chair, check, position. And when I say the words chair check position, here's what I want. Back straight, feet flat, hands ready, eyes watching, ears listening. But there's one very important part of chair check position I haven't talked about yet and it's my favorite part. You see, whenever we do chair check position, it means we're ready to learn. And learning is so much fun. So the most important part of chair check position is to have a great big smile on your face. Now let's practice something. You ready? Students watching, boys and girls in this classroom, you ready to go? In a moment, I'm going to say chair check position. And when I do, I want to see who can obey so quickly and so quietly, but then let's find something out. What happens when you give a smile to me? Do you think that you'll get one back? Let's find out. Ready? Chair. Check. Position. Ooh, look at this. Oh, students watching, I see your smile too and I love it. Our boys and girls in this classroom, you have the biggest, brightest, best smiles. Oh, and you're so still. 
Oh, I'm going to come just peek right over here next to Savvy. Students watching, you come join me. Do you see? Savvy straight back. And I have Benjamin smile and Aria is so still and Titus's eyes are right on me. Excellent job with chair check position students watching. I like how you're working too. Now, let's see if you remember chair check position though. Why don't you get a little comfortable in your seat? Ready? Get comfortable. Okay, chair check position. That was so fast and students watching. I think you were even faster than some of the students in our classroom. Good work. Now that means we're ready to listen and learn. Now there's something else that you'll notice me doing very often as we have our learning together. We are not just going to sit in our seats in chair check position. Instead, we'll be doing a lot of standing. And we want to make sure that we stand in a way that makes it easy for us to learn. So let me show you some things that I'll do with my hands so that you can practice standing right along with us. Now, right now, my hands are ready to teach, but sometimes when I'm teaching, if I'm ready for you to stand, I will make my hands go up toward the ceiling. So stand. Nice, that was really fast. You did great. This means sit when my hands go toward the carpet. Good work. Stand. Nice, Benjamin, you were my number one guy. Sit. Whoop. Oh, I think some students watching would be this that time. Stand. Good, Titus. And sit. Now, you're ready to practice some more. Chair check position. Smiles are the best part. I love yours too, students watching. Nice. Ava was really watching. I don't always say the word. Good for you. Nice. It's fun to learn together, isn't it? Chair check position. Now, there's another motion I want to show you, and this is a motion that's just for certain members that are watching and in our classroom. And it's just for the girls to stand, or maybe sometimes I'll just ask for our boys and boys watching to stand. Whenever I take my right hand and I put it up toward the ceiling, that means only girls and girls watching stand. So girls and girls watching, nice work, you were fast. Good, and Victoria knew that meant sit. Wonderful. Good. All right, boys and boys watching, you're going to be looking for my left hand. And you'll notice my left hand is the hand with the bracelet on it. So when you see that hand, go toward the ceiling. Boys and boys watching, stand. Nice. Emery was watching. Good work. Nice, Titus. Good. Girls and girls watching. Nice, Benjamin. chair check position. And let's do something. Tanner, I've been noticing how well you've been sitting. You come up to the front to this chair and Tanner, would you show our students watching exactly what chair check position looks like? And students watching, you see if Tanner gives you the smile, the best part of chair check position. You got it? Tanner, have a seat. Let's see, does he do it? Oh, students watching, I think you look just as good as Tanner does and many of our boys and girls in our classroom. Notice, first of all, how Tanner is sitting up straight and tall, and that keeps his eyes right on our students watching. And when he's at his seat, it'll be right at the teacher. He has his feet flat on the floor. Oh, he has good posture. That's going to keep his body nice and healthy. Look at his hands. Don't they look like they are ready to work? And now, students watching, I can't see his face right now, so I'm going to step to the side. You keep looking at Tanner's face. And let's see if he did the most important part of chair check position. <gasps> He did. Tanner, I love that smile. Thanks for sharing it with me and with our students watching. Good, you can go back to your seat and you keep up that good chair check position. Students watching, boys and girls in this classroom, we'll keep working on these good habits as we go throughout our lessons together this year. Students watching, this is our very first seat work lesson, and seat work is going to be a chance for you to work on your very own. You'll have a chance to work with some numbers and letters and sentences and words, and you'll also have a chance to do some fun coloring papers. Use the seat work time as a way to train your hands to do good work and to train your mind to learn exactly what it needs to. Now, perhaps you have in front of you, like our students in the classroom do, you have a folder. And I want to talk to you for just a moment about our seat work folder. 
Now inside our seat work folders, you're going to notice what we have. We have two pockets inside of our folder. One pocket has a sticker and one pocket does not. The pocket that has a sticker is the pocket that's for school because I love stickers and stickers are fun. So we have our fun school side is the pocket with a sticker. And every day that we do seat work together for that lesson, you'll pull out the papers that are on the pocket sticker side and we'll look at those papers together. So perhaps you have a folder just like ours. Let's take a little bit of time and let's go over exactly what we're going to be doing for seat work in this lesson. For seat work in this lesson, we're going to be focusing on some worksheets. We'll begin by doing the front sides of our arithmetic worksheet, then a letters and sounds worksheet, then a language worksheet. When we're done with those worksheets, we get to finish up with a fun Bible Friends coloring paper where you will get to color a picture about what we talked about in our Bible lesson, that beautiful home of God called heaven. Now let's take a moment to look at each of these papers. We're going to begin with our first paper, which is our arithmetic paper. And you'll notice the first thing that I'd like you to do is to write your name neatly at the top. Every time you see a place to write your name, I want you to carefully write your name on that paper. Our directions on this paper tell us to count the animals and then color them. Now students watching, do you see where we might be visiting on this paper? What place? And look at the papers in front of you. Benjamin, where do you think we're visiting on our arithmetic paper? Zoo. The zoo. There are all kinds of zoo animals. Maybe you see your favorite zoo animal on this paper. So you'll count the animals and then be able to color them neatly. Now take this paper and we're going to put it right at the bottom of our stack because the next paper we need to look at is our letters and sounds worksheet. Notice our letters and sounds worksheet, something needs to go at the top. Students watching, could you tell me what that is? And what is the first thing we need to write, Victoria? Our name. Yes, we're going to write our name neatly at the top. Look down at our directions. In fact, we have a poem we're going to look at first. Let me read it to you. It's called Morning at the Zoo. Before they open up the gates to let the people in, do you suppose the animals must dress up in their skins? And if the zebra zipper stuck and penguin lost his vest, do you suppose the zoo would close till everyone was dressed? Now, do you think that this poem is for real? Do they sometimes have to close the zoo because zippers get stuck and penguins lost his vest? What do you think, Victoria? Is this a for real poem? What do you think? Yes. She thinks yes. Students watching, do you agree with Victoria? What do you think, Victoria? Do you ever think that the zebra zipper gets stuck? Does a zebra have a zipper? No. no, so this is just a fun poem, but it's a fun one we got to read together. Notice what we're going to do at the bottom of this page. Our directions tell us to fill in this circle under each picture that begins with eh, eh, eh. So look at each of these pictures, and if that word begins with eh, 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 I want you to neatly fill in the circle underneath. Now we'll take this letters and sounds paper and we'll put it underneath so we can see our next worksheet, our language worksheet. Notice what comes first. And what's the first thing that we're going to write, Kobe? Our name. Our name is correct. Notice we have a poem at the top of this as well. It says, I am in first grade this year and I am learning fast. I'll write a story and read it myself before this year is past. Students watching and boys and girls in this classroom, that's kind of exciting to think about, isn't it? Little by little and step by step with hard work, we'll be able to do all of those things. Notice what our directions for our language worksheet say to do. It says to color the capital E's green and color the lowercase E's blue. So our elephant kind of has a secret message inside of this box for us. All of the capital E's, color them green. And the lowercase e's color them blue. And when you're done, I want you to color the elephant picture as well. Well, this language paper, when you're done with that, will go to the bottom of your stack. And then we're ready to do our fun Bible Friends paper. Now, notice what I did. Sometimes our worksheets go up and down. Sometimes they go side to side. You always want to make sure that your worksheet is facing the same way that your name goes. So you'll begin by writing your name at the top of your Bible Friends worksheet. 
and then it says you get to color the picture. Remind me again, where is this picture students watching? And where is this picture taking place, Titus? Heaven. It is. And who lives in heaven, Titus? God. God lives in heaven. So students watching and boys and girls in this classroom, when you finish with your arithmetic, letters and sounds and language worksheet, color this beautiful picture of God's home, heaven. Students watching, my name is Miss Howe, and welcome to our very first phonics class. I'm so excited for the things that we're going to get to learn together. We'll have a chance to learn our letters and special sounds and turn those into words, and those words will turn into sentences and stories and reading. As we read together, we'll not only learn and read good character building stories, but we'll have a chance to read as well from God's Word. As we learn in our reading, we'll also have a chance to work on our spelling skills. We'll learn all kinds of fun spelling words and get to do fun activities together. We'll also be able to do some writing, and as we write, we'll learn and grow. Students watching, we're ready to begin our very first phonics lesson. And phonics is going to be very important throughout this year because we're going to take phonics and we'll learn some things together. We'll learn, first of all, about letters and their sounds, and we'll learn how those letters work together. We'll put them together to make blends and then words. And then we'll take those words and we'll learn to read sentences, paragraphs, and finally stories. We'll also be learning many different language skills as we go throughout phonics together. Now, students watching and boys and girls in this classroom, I've got a little bit of a question for you I want you to think about. Have you ever been to a zoo before? If you have, give me a quiet smile. Oh, I see some students watching and Victoria and Emery see those big smiles. I love it, Hayden. Now think about the last time you went to the zoo. Was it quiet in the zoo? When you went there, was it super silent or super noisy? What do you think, students watching? And how did it sound to you, Victoria? Loud. Yeah. It was, why did you stand to answer? It was very loud, and the reason it was loud was because animals make lots of sounds, don't they? Well, I've got a little bit of a thinking question for our students watching and boys and girls in this classroom. We're going to imagine we have gone to a zoo, and you tell me the animal you hear. Ready? That frightened me just a little bit. Students watching, did you know what animal that was? And I get to call on Benjamin because he was so quiet. Benjamin, stand. Do you know what type of animal that was? I'll give you a clue. He has a mane. Lion? That's it. That was a lion, just like you can see on my picture. All right, well, we're still at the zoo. <coughs> did you get that one, boys watching? And why don't you check their answer for them? Savvy, what did you hear? Um. Big gray elephant. animal. It is an elephant and boys watching. I know you got that as well. Let's see if we can hear one more sound. <laughs> Girls watching, what do you hear? And Victoria, I like that quiet smile. What type of animal do you hear? It's a monkey. It is it's a monkey. Just like when we go to the zoo, we hear animals make all kinds of sounds. Well, the same thing is going to be true for us in phonics. In fact, in phonics, we're going to be taking letters and we're going to take those letters and find out and learn exactly the sounds those letters make. I have right over here a very special chart. And this chart shows some of our letters that we're going to be learning their sounds together. The names of these letters are called vowels. Listen as I say it again and really look at the way I form the word. These are vowels. Students watching and boys and girls in this classroom, I'm going to say it and then I want you to say it after B. Vowels. vowels. Let's try again. Vowels. vowels. That's it. When I point to me, it's my turn. And when I point out to you, it will be your turn. Now, I need a super sharp student who can share with me exactly how many vowels they see in our chart. Students watching, you be counting too. And I see some smiles already on faces. How many vowels do we have, Trey? Stand fast. Let's 
count. One, two, three, four, five. Nice loud answer. Five. Five. There were five vowels and students watching, I think you saw that too. Well, let's go over and let's find out the sounds that these vowels make. I'm going to say it by myself first. Remember when I point to me, it's my turn. And when I point to you, you'll echo. Here we go. Listen carefully because it's your turn next. Ah, apple, ah, ah, ah. Ah, apple, ah, ah, ah. Students watching, did you stay together the way our boys and girls in the classroom did? I love that so much, I wanna start again. Good workers in here. Ah, apple, oh, my turn first. Ah, apple, ah, ah, ah. Ah, apple, ah, ah, ah. Ah, elephant, ah, ah, ah. Ah, elephant, ah, ah, ah. Eh, inchworm, eh, eh. Oh, my turn first. Eh, inchworm, eh, eh, eh. Eh, inchworm, eh, eh, eh. Ah, ostrich, ah, ah, ah. Umbrella, uh, uh, uh. Uh, umbrella, uh, uh, uh. That was great, students watching. You did a great job as well. Everyone stand up. And let's start this chart, and we'll say this chart together. Ah, uh, apple, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. boys and boys watching to sit. Girls and girls watching stay standing. So boys are sitting, girls and girls watching are standing. Girls and girls watching, let's say our, oh no, I forgot the names of these letters. Girls watching, remind me, what are these called? And Hayden, what are these letters called? Vowels. They're vowels. Girls watching, I know you got that too. Let's start together, girls and girls watching. Titus, you can sit. Start together. Ah. Uh, Apple, ah, ah, ah. Ah, elephant, ah, ah, ah. Eh, each one, eh, eh, eh. Ah, ostrich, ah, ah, ah. Ah, umbrella, ah, ah, ah. Have a seat and girls and girls watching, I have to come do something. I have to come over to where Savvy is sitting and I'm going to give her an air high five because she knew all of her vowels. Air high five. Got it. Nice job, Savvy. Good job, girls watching. Boys and boys watching, you stand up. And boys and boys watching, let's say these together. So boys and boys watching are standing. There we go, Emery. Got it, Trey. You're a boy, so you stand right up with us. Emery and Trey are standing, so is Kobe. Boys and boys watching, let's do this together. Ah, uh, apple, ah, ah, ah. Eh, elephant, eh, eh, eh. Eh, inchworm, eh, eh, eh. Boys and boys watching can have a seat. You did a good job staying together. Let's have Ava stand up. And Ava, I want to see if you can tell me the vowel that I'm pointing to. Ava? Uh, uh, ostrich, uh, uh, uh. Super sharp worker. Girls watching do this one for me. And check their answer. Aria. Thanks, Ava. Uh, uh, apple, uh, uh, uh. Super. Let's go to this one. Boys watching, tell me this vowel. And check their answer, Emery. Uh, umbrella, uh, uh, uh. Stand to answer. Uh, umbrella, uh, uh, uh. I loved your fast answer, boys watching. I know you were fast too. Tell me this vowel, Kobe. E. Oh, stand fast, Kobe, and think about its short sounds. Uh, elephant. Uh, uh, uh. You did it, Aslan. Uh, 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 uh. Super, Benjamin. Uh, apple, uh, uh, uh. Hayden. Uh, umbrella, uh, uh, uh. Girls watching. And check their answer, Tanner. A little bit louder. Uh, ostrich, uh, uh. You did it, Victoria. And from it, it, it. Boys watching. And check their answer, Titus. Uh, 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 uh. Nice job. So what were these letters called again, students watching? 
And what are these five letters called, Benjamin? They're called our? Vowels. Vowels is just right. Students watching, I know you got that as well. Well, let's take just a little bit of time and let's focus on one of our vowels. Can you already tell what vowel we're going to work with? But I want you to notice something very special about my card. Notice as you look at my card, here is my eh elephant sound for my letter E. But notice that my letters don't look the same. This right here shows a capital letter. And right next to it is a lowercase letter. Now, both of these letters, they're going to make the same sound when they're the eh elephant sound, but this is a capital letter and this is a lowercase letter. Now, I'm going to share with you a sentence about our letter E. Students watching and boys and girls in this classroom, listen carefully and watch carefully as I share our sentence for our new vowel. E says eh as an elephant. Short E says eh, eh, eh. Listen and watch as I say it again. E says eh as an elephant. Short E says eh, eh, eh. Now this time I'm going to say it by myself, but I want our students watching and boys and girls in this classroom to do the motions with me. So your lips are quiet, but your hands are doing the motions. Ready? E says eh as an elephant. Short E says eh, eh, eh. Everyone stand. Now this time you're going to say and do the motions with me. E says eh as an elephant. Short E says eh, eh, eh. Stay standing. Let's do it again. E says eh as an elephant. Short E says eh, eh, eh. Let's have our girls and girls watching sit. Boys and boys watching stay standing. Boys and boys watching, let's say this together. E says eh as an elephant. Short E says eh, eh, eh. Nice job. Have a seat. Girls and girls watching stand. Girls and girls watching, let's say our new letter together. E says eh as an elephant. Short E says eh, eh, eh. Nice job. Have a seat. Trey, stand up and Trey, share with us our new letter. It says, eh, eh. As a, what's this a picture of? It's an elephant. Short. Short. It says, eh, eh, eh. Trey did a great job with that. Students watching, share with us this letter. And let's check their answer, Savvy. Um, E says, eh, is an elephant. Little, little E says E, eh, eh, eh. That's it, short E says eh, eh, eh. Now I am ready for a little bit of help. And I want to see what kinds of things you remember. So let's walk over here and students watching you be ready to answer right along with the students I call in in the classroom. Titus, stand and tell us this vowel sounds. Ah. Acid. So, ah, uh, apple, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Uh, apple, ah, uh, ah. Uh. You did it, Ava. Uh, Austin, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Super, Emery. It, 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 it. Nice job, boys watching. And check their answer, Benjamin. Uh, uh, elephant, uh, uh. You did it, girls watching. And check their answer, Kobe. Uh, for umbrella, uh, uh, uh. Uh, umbrella, uh, uh, uh. Now let's see if we remember our vowel that we worked on. So everyone stand up. Notice our great big vowel, but remember our capital letter and lowercase say the same thing. Let's say it together. E says eh as an elephant. Short E says eh, eh, eh. Nice job. Now, if you sit in a gray chair, sit. Blue chairs stay standing. Blue chairs, let's say our new letter together. E says eh as an elephant. Short E says eh, eh, eh. Good.
good. Blue chairs sit. Gray chairs and students watching stand. Gray chairs and students watching. Let's say this together. E says F as an elephant. Short. E says F. Nice job. You can have a seat students watching and boys and girls in our classroom. In just a moment, I'm going to be reading a poem to you. And in this poem, there's something I really want you to watch for and I want you to listen for. I want you to watch for our uh, uh, elephant sound and I want you to listen for it as well. Now, as you look at our poem up on our screen, do you see what color our uh, uh, elephant sound is? If you do, give me a smile. I see it students watching and I see it students in our classroom. Listen carefully for the eh, eh sound. Extra, extra, E says eh. Elevator, escalator, eh, eh, eh. Elbow, electric, echo, engineer. Enter and exit right through here. Elephant, Ecuador, extra eggs for me. Extra, extra, I like E. And what vowel sound did you hear over and over, students watching? And what vowel sound did you hear, Hayden? What's our new, that's it, our eh, eh, eh sound. Listen as I read it one more time and listen for the eh, eh sound. Extra, extra, E says eh. Elevator, escalator, eh, eh, eh. Elbow, electric, echo, engineer. Enter and exit right through here. Elephant, Ecuador, extra eggs for me. Extra, extra, I like E. Remind me again, students watching, what vowel sound did you hear often in that poem? And what vowel sound did you hear, Titus? E. Stand to answer. E. That's it, our eh, eh sound. Students watching, boys and girls in our classroom, I don't think you realize this, but I brought a very special guest with us so that we could learn our uh, uh, elephant sound. But I have to tell you, my guest is getting a little bit impatient because she's hungry. Now, students watching, tell me what type of animal I brought with me for a uh, uh, elephant. And what type of animal did I bring with me, Savvy? Elephant. I did, and elephants, everyone knows, absolutely love to eat a certain type of food. What type of food does my elephant, Ellie, love to eat? Emery. Peanuts. But you know what? Ellie Elephant is kind of picky about the type of food she likes to eat. She only likes peanuts that have the eh, eh elephant sound. So I need some really careful workers who can do something. We don't want to feed her something she's not going to eat. But I want to see if I can have some people who can find that eh, eh sound and feed Ellie Elephant just the type of food she likes to eat. Now, Tanner, I want you to come up to the front and you find an eh, eh, elephant peanut and feed it to Ellie. Come up to the front, Benjamin, behind Tanner, and you find an eh, eh, elephant. Victoria and Aria, you be ready as well. Now, while they're doing that, students watching and boys and girls in our classroom, I'm going to read some words to you. And I want you to tell me if you find that eh, eh, elephant sound. That's it, feed just one, and then you can go back to your seat. Do you hear the eh, eh, elephant sound in pet? Students watching? And what do you think? Trey, did you hear eh, elephant in pet? Yes or no? Yes, stand to answer. Yes. Good, nice and loud. One more time. Yes. Yes, we heard it. What about the word sun, boys watching? And Emery, do you hear uh, elephant and sun? No. No, you don't. Do you know what vowel sounds you hear in sun? S. Now that's our consonant, su uh, 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 sun. U. That's it. I hope you got that too, students watching. Lead. What do you hear, Ava? Do you hear uh, elephants? Yes. I heard it too. Girls watching, I hope you heard it. Mad. Titus. Oh, I can't hear a head nod. Louder. No. No. What vowel sound did you hear? Mad. What vowel sounds? A. Yes, the sound of A. Ten. Girls watching. 
and check their answer, Hayden. Yes, she heard E and 10, set, boys watching. And check their answer, Tanner. Stand to answer. Yes, he heard a eh, eh, right in the middle. And let's come over here. I didn't hear Ellie Elephant make any noises. Did you students watching or boys and girls in the classroom? So do you think we did a good job feeding her just the type of peanuts she likes to eat? Let's check over here. I'm going to move them to the... Oh, I better be fast and careful. I wouldn't want Ellie Elephant to come and nibble on my finger. So students watching, you be ready to help me be fast. Here we go. First one, Savvy. What's our vowel sound? Quick, quick. E. Stand to answer. E. That's it. Our next one right here. Girls watching, tell me. And check their answer, Victoria. E. Yes, so we're feeding the right type of peanuts. Boys watching, what did I just move? And check their answer for me, Benjamin. That's it. And our last one right over here. Quick, quick. Aslan, what do you see? E. So we did a great job feeding Ellie Elephant just the type of peanuts she liked. Now I've got a very special bag over here and we've got just a little bit of time to see how well we know our vowels. Up to the front, I'd like Emery to come. And Emery, just reach your hand inside of this bag. I've got some cards. I want you to grab just one. And we're going to show it to the students watching. Oh, I think you got a couple, but you got, there you go. Show that to the students watching so they can see it and tell me, students watching, what vowel he has. And Emery, you look at your vowel really quickly. And what vowel do you have? Uh, That's it. And what does it say for its short sound? Uh, Excellent. You can take that back to your seat. Students watching, we're going to keep working on our vowel sounds together. Students watching, welcome to our very first writing lesson. For writing, we're going to be doing something for the next several lessons. We're going to be focusing on making our very best handwriting possible. And we're going to talk about how we do that, how we're going to neatly form every letter. We'll go lesson by lesson and we'll practice and learn each of the letters together, both the lowercase and the capital letters. But in a few lessons after that, we get to do something exciting in first grade. We will be writing together sentences and finally stories. But we want to begin by learning how to write neatly so that we can write well. Now I want you to notice behind me something that I have on my board. Do you see my cursive handwriting? Now our handwriting is going to be very important because it's going to show others who we are and how we take our time and do things well. But I want you to notice how I have houses that are on my board. And within those houses are different lines. There are going to be places that our letters live. There are three places that a letter can live. It can live in the upstairs, it can live in the downstairs, or it can live in the basement. Let me say that again so we can start to remember and see where our letters will live. They can live in the upstairs, the downstairs, or they can live in the basement. Now, to help us remember where a letter might live, I want to show you some things. And students watching, boys and girls in this classroom, you watch. Our letters can live in the upstairs, the downstairs, or the basement. Everyone stand and let's say that together. Upstairs, downstairs, basement. Let's do it again. Upstairs, downstairs, basement. Nice job. You can have a seat. Now, within our places in our house where we have the upstairs, downstairs, and basement, you can also see some lines that are going to be very helpful to us. At the very top, this line is called the ceiling. Below that is called the upstairs midline. Underneath this, this is just a little bit thicker. It's called the dotted line. Then we have the downstairs midline. We have the pink carpet. And finally, we, we have the floor of our basement. Now these lines will be important because these lines will show us where we need to start and also where we need to stop. And they'll help us have neat, consistent, and careful writing. Now, as we're looking at the writing on my board, can you already start to see the letter that we're going to learn together? Maybe our students watching and boys and girls in this classroom already have seen this cursive letter. But before we're ready to write, I want to show you something. And right over here, it looks a lot like the same letter, doesn't it? 
but this is a warm up. Many times in many lessons, we'll do a warm up. And that warm up is just going to get our hands ready to make the letter that we'll be doing for that lesson. So as I write on my board to do the warm up, students watching and boys and girls in this classroom, just grab your pointer finger. This is going to be your warm up finger, and I want you to do these loops right along with me. Now notice as I do these loops, good job, Kobe. I'm doing my best to make sure I'm touching the lines. I'm not picking up my chalk. You're not moving your finger except to keep those loops going. Because in cursive writing, many times our letters connect and we want to have smooth and careful connections. Why don't we try it again? Go ahead and get your pointer finger up in the air. Students watching you join us and let's just do some loops. And those loops are going to help us get ready to write our letter. All right, hands are down and we're ready to look at our very first letter that we'll be learning. The letter we're going to learn is lowercase letter E. Now notice my card. There are two letter E's on it. First is our capital letter E and we'll learn how to make that in another lesson. But in this lesson, we're going to focus on neatly and carefully writing lowercase letter E. I want you to notice where lowercase letter E lives. Students watching, tell me, upstairs, downstairs, or basement? And check their answer for us. Aria, where does lowercase letter E live? Upstairs, downstairs, or basement? Upstairs. Oh, she says lives up in the upstairs. Students watching, is that what you said? And Hayden, do you agree with Aria? Does letter E live in the upstairs, lowercase e? Yes or no? Stand to answer. No, no. no where does it live, Hayden? On the pink it does, it lives in the downstairs and that's where we want our lowercase letter e to be. So notice where we're going to start. We're going to start right here on the pink carpet. We're going to curve all the way up to that dotted line curve back down, touch the carpet, and stop at the downstairs midline. Watch me as I trace this again. We're going to start right here on the pink carpet. We're going to curve all the way up to the dotted line, curve back down, touch the pink carpet, and stop at the downstairs midline. Now I want us to take just a moment and I want us to watch a special video. And this video is going to show us how we make the letter E. Now, I want you to notice as we do this that on the letter E, the person who's writing on our video, they're not going to go very quickly. Instead, they're going to take their time. I want you to be ready to take your time when it's time for you to write your letter E in just a little bit. So there we notice our capital and lowercase E. We're starting right on the pink carpet. We're going to curve up to the dotted line. Curve back down, touch the pink carpet, and stop at the downstairs midline. Now, let's see if you can watch me as I trace our lowercase e on our board. I want to be careful to start at the right places, touch the right lines, and stop at the right place. The same as you need to do when you do your writing. Notice again, Savvy, we're starting right here on the pink carpet. We're going to curve all the way up to the dotted line. Curve back down, touch the carpet, and stop right at the downstairs midline. Students watching, boys and girls in our classroom, go ahead and get your pointer finger ready. Let's make a gorgeous lowercase e together. Get right on that pink carpet. We're going to curve all the way up to the dotted line, come back down, touch that carpet, and stop at the downstairs midline. Now, Watch me as I trace our letter E again. Hayden has her eyes right on me. She's going to have a gorgeous lowercase e. We're starting right at the pink carpet. We're going to curve up to the dotted line, come back down, touch that carpet, and stop at the downstairs midline. Now, boys and girls in this classroom and students watching, we're going to be ready in just a moment to come do some practice either students watching on your paper in front of you, your scrap paper, or students watching over here, or students in our classroom over here on the board. And students watching, boys and girls in our classroom, we're gonna see if Miss Howe can take her time and neatly write a letter E. Remember, we're going to start, I forgot the name of this line. Students watching, what's the name of the line that we need to start our lowercase e on? And help me out, Emery, what's the name of this line? 
The pink, <laughs> the pink carpet is right next time, stand to answer. I'm starting at the pink carpet. I'm gonna curve up to the dotted line, touch that dotted line and stop right at the downstairs midline. All right, students watching and boys and girls in our classroom, let's see how Tanner and Ava did with writing. Let's see if they got every single part right as they made their lowercase e. Oh, I can see right here that I like the way Ava started right there on her pink dot. And she has a nice curve and she stops at a good place as well. Good job, Ava. Over here, Tanner has really good slant. Did you notice that our cursive letter E has slant? It's not standing up straight and tall. It leans just a little bit to the side. So Tanner and Ava, what a great first start to our cursive letter E. Now let's come over here and let's see if I can write our cursive letter E one more time. Now while I write it on the board, students watching and boys and girls in our classroom, why don't you have your pointer finger ready and we'll do it right along together. Ready? Here we go, get that pointer finger. Good job, Benjamin. We're going to start right on the pink carpet. We'll curve up to the dotted line. Loop back down, touch the carpet, and stop at the downstairs midline. Good job, you can put your pointer finger down. Trey, I saw your letter E in the air. It looks really good, keep it up. And notice how we touch every single line when we make this letter. Now, before we begin our worksheet together, students watching and boys and girls in this classroom, I wanna to talk to you about how important it is to be a neat writer. So there are some things savvy that we're going to be looking for as we write. One of the first things we're going to look for is the way that we sit. We want to have nice, neat posture as we sit in our seats. We're not going to lean over our workstation. We're not going to be far away so that we have to lean to get to our paper. But instead, we'll sit up straight and tall and be close to where our paper is. The next thing we want to do is we want to have a nice pace, slow and steady. Not going so quickly we don't touching line. We're not touching those lines, but really taking our time and making our writing look neat. We also want to be careful about the way that we hold our pencil. Now students watching and boys and girls in this classroom, I think many of you would have a pencil similar to this and I also have something on my pencil called a gripper. And that gripper is going to help me keep my pencil just the right way. It doesn't lean down on my hand, instead it stays up just a bit and also notice the nice sharp point I have on my pencil. A sharp pencil helps us have good neat writing. So we want to hold our pencil correctly as we write. And the last thing we want to work on is we want to work on the way that our paper is slanted. Now students watching and boys and girls in this classroom, you may have had your on-site teacher or your teacher here help you by putting a dot or a sticker to let you know exactly how to slant your paper. Now I am right-handed, so that means I'm going to slant my paper so that the corner touches this green star. But students watching and boys and girls in our classroom, if you write with your left hand, instead your paper is going to slant the other direction and that's going to give you just the slant that you need for your paper. I think we're ready to begin with our lowercase e. So right in front of you, you should have your paper. First thing though, let's check our posture. Are you sitting up straight and tall? Now let's get our paper just the right way. If you need to slant that paper, go ahead, or if you need to tuck in just a bit to your table, go ahead. So students watching and boys and girls in our classroom, if you need to tuck in. Now, let's go ahead and let's take the corner of our paper and let's put it right on either that sticker or star. Now pick up your pencil and have it in your hand. Check the way you're holding that pencil. And let's begin by writing our name neatly at the top. Notice that place right at the top where you need to write your name. Good, so students watching, you're joining us, boys and girls in this classroom, we're getting that pencil and we'll write our name neatly at the top. Good, Savvy, go ahead and have your pencil in your hand. Mm -hmm. Okay, why don't we do it together then? We'll work together. Nice. Now, even if you're still working on your name, let's do something. Do you see that blue letter E right at the top of your paper? Let's put our pencil point on the red dot of that blue letter E, and let's carefully trace that letter E together. So we're going to start right on the pink carpet. We're going to curve all the way up to the dotted line loop back down, touch the carpet, and stop at the downstairs midline. 
Go to your warm up and let's do those loops together. So students watching, you join right along with us. Good job, Hayden. Good, you got it. Looks really good. Slow and steady. That's fine. We're off to a good start with that tray. Good job, Ava. Good, good job touching those lines. Nice. Victoria, so careful. That's okay. We'll finish it a little later. All right, even if you're not finished with your warm up, let's go to our very first house and let's carefully trace that letter E. Good. Got it, Hayden. Now, students watching, boys and girls in this classroom, let's pause for just a moment. Put your pencils down and have your eyes right on me. In a moment, we're going to keep writing on our letter E side of our paper, but you'll notice there's another side to this paper as well. And on the other side, we're going to learn how to write some numbers together. And I want to show you exactly how we're going to write each of these numbers. First is our number one. Number one lives in the upstairs and in the downstairs. We're going to start right at the ceiling and slant down to the pink carpet. Take your pointer finger, put it in the air. Got it, that was fast, Aria. Let's start right at the ceiling, slant down to the pink carpet. Good job, you can put your pointer finger down. Our next number that we're going to be writing is the number two. Number two is a little bit more challenging. It's not going to start on a line. Instead, it will start partway between the ceiling and the upstairs midline. We'll curve, touch the ceiling, slant down to the pink carpet, put just a little curl, come up and stop. Take your pointer finger, students watching and boys and girls in the classroom, and let's trace this number two together. Start underneath the ceiling, curve up to the ceiling, slant down to the, the carpet, her and stop. Now, students watching, I want you to continue working on both the lowercase letter E side and the number side of this paper with your on-site teacher. Students watching, welcome to our arithmetic class. My name is Ms. Howe and I'm excited about the things we'll have a chance to do together. We'll learn how to count, we'll learn about numbers, and we'll learn combinations. And then we'll take those combinations and we'll solve story problems as well as do big combinations as well. As we learn and as we work, we'll develop new skills and be able to use these numbers well. Students watching, welcome to our very first arithmetic lesson. I'm excited about the things that we get to learn together in arithmetic. Not only are we going to learn how numbers work together, but we're going to practice a lot of combinations, whether addition or subtraction. We'll learn how to use clocks and thermometers. We'll count coins and we'll find out how numbers work together. We'll even do some skip counting along the way. Now, I want you to take just a moment, students watching and boys and girls in our classroom, and I want you to notice some things that I have on our board. Maybe you've already noticed some of the things. Do you see these animals that I have right on the edge of my chalk tray. Where might be a place that you could see all of these animals in the same place? Students watching, where do you think we might be visiting in arithmetic? And I think I've got a really sharp student in here who could tell me, Kobe, where do you think we're going to visit in arithmetic? Where could you see a crocodile and a giraffe, all of them in the same place? the alligator and the water and the giraffe and the grass. I would, but where could I go? What one place could I go and see all of those animals? I might go to the... Zoo. To the zoo. Students watching, I think you probably thought of that too. Well, in arithmetic for the next few lessons, we're going to be visiting the zoo. And since I hope you love the zoo as much as I do, we're going to be learning a song together. I want you to listen to the words of this song and see if your favorite animal is, is mentioned. Students watching, boys in the classroom, listen to Visit the Zoo. We'll visit the animals that live in the zoo. Zebra, gorilla, giraffe, kangaroo, elephant and monkey, alligator there, lion and tiger and yak will be there, antelope and buffalo, panda bear too, the middle, the animals that live in the zoo. All 
All right, did you hear some of your favorite animals mentioned in our song students watching? What about you? Let's do this. Let's go ahead and let's just try this song together. Students watching, boys and girls in our classroom, stand up. And let's sing our new song, Visit the Animals. We'll visit the animals that live in the zoo. Zebra, gorilla, giraffe, kangaroo. Elephant and monkey, alligator, bear. Lion and tiger and yak will be there. Antelope and buffalo, panda, bear too. God made all the animals that live in the zoo. Victoria, did you hear your favorite zoo animal in our song? Yes. What is it? It's a giraffe. Oh, I like giraffes too. Students watching, is that your favorite? Why don't we stay standing and let's try our new song again. We'll visit the animals that live in the zoo. Zebra, gorilla, giraffe, kangaroo. Elephant and monkey, alligator, bear. Lion and tiger and yak will be there. Antelope and buffalo, panda, bear too. God made all the animals that live in the zoo. What was your favorite animal that was mentioned, Benjamin? Tiger. Oh, he likes a tiger. You can have a seat. Maybe some of our boys watching, that's your favorite too. Well, we are going to be taking a trip all throughout arithmetic in a zoo. And if you notice on my screen, I've got a great big zoo picture. And pretty soon, we're going to be walking down the path and following all of these numbers. Maybe some of our students watching and boys and girls in this classroom can already count the numbers that are on the path. But first, I want you to take just a moment and notice some of the animals that are in our zoo. Oh, I see an animal right here. If you know what animal this is, give me a smile. Students watching, why don't you answer this first? And what type of animal do you see, Tanner? A rhino. I just wanted you to need to answer. Rhino. A rhino, that's right. He noticed that horn right on the front of him. Oh, over here. I know Savvy knows this one. Savvy, tell me this one. Elephant. It is an elephant. Oh, I see Victoria's favorite answer. Students watching, did you see Victoria's favorite animal? And Victoria, what's your favorite animal again? A giraffe. A giraffe, and there we can see some giraffes in our zoo. Uh-oh, I need someone pretty brave to tell me about this animal. Boys watching, why don't you tell me which one you see here? And, oh, Benjamin looks really brave. Benjamin, tell me about this animal. Love that smile, Titus. Alligator. It is, it's an alligator. Titus, tell me about this animal here. Um, no, see the answer. Can you see what it is? It's a, a hippopotamus. It is. It's a hippopotamus, or sometimes we call it a hippo. Good job with all of those animals. Now, we're going to come back to this in just a little bit, and we're going to follow that path and do some counting. But first, I want you to take a moment and look at my counting zoo right here. And you can see that we start right here with this number, and we're going to travel all the way down to this number. Now, I wonder if I have some super sharp students who can already begin to help me with counting. In fact, girls watching, why don't you tell me this number? And why don't we check their answer, Hayden? What number am I pointing to? Two. Careful, look right up here, the very first number. Can you see it? Look right there. One. It is, it's the number one. And we're going to count all the way down to, boys watching, share with me this number. And Emery, what number am I pointing to at the very bottom? 10. It is the number 10. Are you ready to see if on our very first arithmetic lesson we can count all the way from 1 to 10? What do you think, students watching, boys and girls in this classroom, could we handle a big job like that? Let's do it. Let's stand up. Follow my teacher pointer together. 1, 2, sure our students watching heard our boys and girls in the classroom as loudly as they should have. So students watching, boys and girls in the classroom a little louder. I want to know that you know these numbers. Start together. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, students watching, boys and girls in the classroom, do something for me. Take your hand, put it up in the air, give me a wave. Now, pat, pat, 
Pat, have a seat. Pat yourself on the back because you did such a good job with our counting. I wonder though, do I have one student who thinks they could count all the way from the top to the bottom by them? Oh, students watching, Titus thinks that he can do it all by himself. You're sure, Titus. Titus, could I have the boys watching join you as you count? All right, boys watching, stand with Titus and let's see, can you do this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Excellent job, Titus and boys watching. We heard you so clearly. You got every number right. You can have a seat. I wonder if I have someone else who thinks they can count from the top all the way to the bottom. Aslan, think you can do it? Could the girls watching join you? All right, girls watching, you join Aslan as she counts. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Wow, Aslan and girls watching, what a great job you did. I want you to notice something special about my chart though. When I go from one number to the next, do you notice how there are more animals next to the number? Every time I count to the next number, I have one more animal because I count one more. So I have one lion, but one, two butterflies. I have two butterflies, but one, two, three hummingbirds. Let's think about this. When I go from the number five to the number six, how many more animals do I have? Aria, notice I have five yaks and six sea turtles. How many more do I have? Let's think, these are the same, these are the same, these are the same, these are the same, these are the same. How many did I have extra? Just one. One more is right. When I count the next number, I have one more. What about when I go from eight to nine? How many more foxes do I have than the toucans, Hayden? So this is the same, this is the same, this is the same, the same, the same, the same, the same, the same. How many did I have extra? One more. I did, I had one more. When I count to the next number, I have one more. Well, let's go from one to two. How many more do I have, students watching? and help them out. Victoria, how many more do I have? Here's the same. How many are extra? One. I have one more. When I count the next number, I have one more. What about when I go from three to four? Aslan, how many more do I have? One more. I do because when I go to the next number, I count one more. What about if I go from nine to 10? How many more do I have, boys watching? And help me out. Titus, love that smile. How many more? I do, I have one more when I go to the next number. When well, ready to have some helpers come up to the front of our classroom. And helpers, I'm going to have you do something. I have with me today some sticks. And these sticks we're going to use to count. And we're gonna count all the way up to a certain number. In fact, I'm going to show you the number we're counting to. Did you get it? Students watching, do you see what number we're going to count to? And what number is this, Tanner? Ten. ten. Stand up really fast and be nice and loud. Ten. It is the number ten. Tanner, why don't you come up to the front and you're going to hold our first stick for us. So Tanner, come really quickly. Love Benjamin's smile. Benjamin, you come up and share with our students watching as well. Like that eyes, those eyes on me, Victoria. Victoria, come on up to the front. Good. Oh, students watching, are you getting some good smiles? I certainly hope so. We're glad you're here with us. Let's have Aria come up to the front. Nice, Titus, loving those eyes. Titus, you come up to the front. Emery, come up to the front, ready to share your smile. Nice job, Titus. Kobe, coming up to the front. Come up to the front for us, please. Aslan, Hayden, come up to the front. And let's have up to the front for me, please, Trey. Now, I've got a big job for Savvy. Savvy, I need to know how many sticks I have at the front of the classroom, but first, Savvy, I've got a question for you. I can't see their faces. I know you can, I know our students watching can. Do you see really nice smiles on faces? 
Good. Now you share one back with them. Savvy, why don't you stand up? Girls watching, join Savvy, and let's count to see how many people we have at the front of our room. Here we go, Savvy, count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Nine, ten. Girls watching, did you count that well the way that Savvy did? Savvy, good work. You can have a seat. But I wonder, can, can we check your work to make sure you did it just right? Is that fine, Savvy? All right, I want Ava to stand up. Ava, do you mind helping us check to see how many people are at the front? And boys watching, I want you to count with Ava. I can't remember. I know we have a certain number at the front. I have already forgotten. Do we have smiles on our faces still? look good. All right, let's start right here. Ava, boys watching, join Ava. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So how many people are at the front of the room? Ava and boys watching. Ten. That's right, there are ten people. Good job. You can have a seat. Well, let's think for just a moment. When I go from one to two, how many more do I have? Students watching. And help me out. How many more do I have? Aria. Look at our chart right here. One lion to two butterflies. How many more do I have? Two. Not two more. This is the same. How many is extra? When I count one number to the next number, it is one more. What about if I go from three to four? Students watching, how many more do I have between three and four? And how many more do I have between three and four? Titus. Um. So here's three. Here's four. How many more do I have? I have one more. Good for you. Now, as you said, I'm going to take your stick, but you have to count your number. Boys and girls watching, you count with our boys and girls in the classroom. So, Tanner, what's your number? One. Good. You can sit. Two. Two. Three. Super. Four. Five. Good. Six. Seven. Nice. Eight. Good. Nice job. Trey can have a seat. If I go from the number eight to nine, how many more do I have? Students watching. And let's look at our chart. I'm going from eight to nine. How many more do I have, Benjamin? One. That's right. When I count to the next number, I count one more. Now, that was kind of a big job to be able to count all the way from the number one to the number 10. But I wonder, could we do it one more time? Everybody stand up. Students watching, join us. Let's start at the top and let's count from one to 10 together. Notice as I get one bigger, I count one more. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, stay standing, stay standing, stay standing, stay standing. Students watch me, join me over here. Can we still count? count? Aria says I can because she's smiling at me. Students watching, I hope you're smiling too and enjoying our arithmetic lesson together. Titus, I love it. Let's start right here. Students watching, join us. One, One two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, that's fantastic. Girls and girls watching, sit. Boys and boys watching, stay standing. Let's start at the top, boys and boys watching. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Nice job. You can have a seat. Girls and girls watching, stand up. Girls and girls watching, let's count together. Live Benjamin's eyes on me. All right, girls. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, job. You can have a seat. I've got a question. When I go from three to four, how many more did I count, Ava? One. I did. I counted one more. What about when I go from six to seven? How many more did I count, Savvy? One more. That's correct. What about when I go from nine to ten? Students watching, how many more did I count? And check their answer for them, Victoria. Uh, from nine to ten, I count... One more. That's it. I count just one more. Now, I know that we're ready to take a little bit of a trip through the zoo, but I have to tell you, 
I'm a little bit concerned because it looks like a long walk to me. What do you think? Students watching, boys and girls in the classroom, we're probably a little bit too tired to take this trip to the zoo, don't you think? Oh, Victoria and Titus think that we can do it for sure. Students watching, you think we could do it? But let's look. Just follow my pointer along the path. Oh, I think we need to stop right there. Don't you, students watching? Because that's the... Oh, you still think that we can keep going? We could travel all the way down to... Students watching, tell me what number you see here and help them out. What number am I pointing to, Kobe? 20. Stand to answer. 20. The number 20? You think that on our very first arithmetic lesson in first grade, we could count to the number 20? Oh, students watching, I don't think so. Boys, you think we can do it? Okay, here's what I want us to do then. Let's stand up, jump up one time, sit down, stand up, turn around one time, all right, by your chairs now, I think we can do it. Let's start together. Follow my pointer, students watching, join us. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, watch my pointer start again. Six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, students watching, did you follow along like the boys and girls in our classroom? Good, good, good job. Let's start at nine. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Oh, there's some good watchers in here. Let's start again at 16. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. All right, everyone is standing. Students watching, boys and girls in the classroom, take a bow. And have a seat because we counted all the way to what number, students watching? And what number did we count all the way to Aslan? 20. We did. We counted to the number 20. Now, I've got kind of a tough question. I know that we talked about our numbers from 1 to 10, but how many more is it when I go from 11 to 12? Can you think about what we learned? How many more is it between 11 and 12, Titus? One more. That's it. It's one more because I'm just counting the next number. What about if I go from 19 to 20? How many more is that, students watching? And how many more is that, Hayden? When I go from 19 to 20, it's just one more. It is because I'm counting to the next number. Now, students watching and boys and girls in this classroom, there is something that I've really been wondering about ever since we started this arithmetic lesson. Maybe you've been wondering this too. I've been wondering about how many boys and girls we have in this classroom, and I kind of think I'd like to know. Do you, would you mind if we take just a little arithmetic break and we count to find out how many children are in the classroom? But I also think something. I think we've been working really hard, don't you? I think that we deserve maybe just a little bit of a break, and not just any type of break. I think it would be fun to take a break with an animal cracker. And students watching, perhaps your on-site teacher has one ready for you too. And in just a moment, you join us as we count around the room. As I hand an animal cracker, I want you to count to the next number. So we're going to begin right here with Hayden. And students watching, what number am I going to count with Hayden? And Titus is already ready to answer. Titus, what should I count with for Hayden? One. I'm going to start with a number one. Well, when I get to Trey, it's going to be one more. So what number is one more than one? Students watching. And what number is one more than one, Benjamin? Two. You did it. All right, students watching, are you ready to join us and count? Boys and girls in this classroom, are you ready? When I hand it to you, just hold it in your hand. We'll all eat it together. Let's begin. Oh no, we forgot this number. Students watching, did you say it? Ready to count. Here we go. One. Good. Two. Super. Oh, what number is one more than two, Emery? Two. Oh, one, two. Three. There you go. Let's go to three together. Three. Four. Four. 
good. What number is one more than five? Students watching. And what number is one more than five, Tanner? Six. Six. Let's go to six together. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. What number is one more than nine girls watching? And what number is one more than nine, Aria? Ten. Oh, just Aria. What number is one more than nine, Aria? Ten. Ten. Let's start with ten together. Ten. Eleven. Twelve. Oh, I got a thinking question for you. Did everybody in this classroom get an animal cracker snack? students watching. And what do you think? Ava, did everyone in the classroom get an animal cracker snack? Yes. Did everybody get an animal cracker snack, Ava? Yes. Did I get an animal cracker? Did I work hard? May I have an animal cracker snack? Okay, so I've got a question for you. What number is one more than 12 students watching? That's my number. And what number did our students watching say, Benjamin? 13. That's right. All right. We have our animal crackers. Students watching, join us. You ready? One, two. Oh, wait. Don't eat it yet. What number is one more than two girls watching? Okay. One more than two, Hayden. Three. All right. One, two, three. Mmm. I am glad we worked so hard. Students watching, we're ready to begin to look at our numbers one by one. And I brought with me uh, some cards, but also a zoo. Right now, my zoo looks a little bit empty and my zoo doesn't match my card. In fact, students watching, how many balloons do I have on my card? And Savvy, how many balloons are on my card? One. That's right, I have one balloon on my card, but Savvy, do I have one animal in my zoo? Choose your favorite animal, put it right inside. So Savvy, come on, choose one animal, put it inside. And while she does that, we're going to look at the number one and the number word one. This is the number one, and this is the number word one. O N E is the number word one. Listen one more time. O N E is the number word one. So help me out, remind me, what number do you see on my card? Benjamin. One. I do, I have the number one, and we're gonna look inside of our zoo. Savvy, which animal would you like to choose? Um, kangaroo. She likes the kangaroo. We're gonna make this kangaroo hop, hop, hop to the zoo. And now how many animals are in my zoo, Savvy? One. I have one animal in my zoo. But let's look at my next card. How many pennies do you see on my card? Boys watching. And check their answer for us, Titus. Two. I do have two. Now, Titus, do I have two animals in my zoo right now? Oh, stand to answer and use your mouth. No. No, I don't. How many animals do I have, Titus? One. I have one animal, but I want two. How many more animals should I move over so I have two animals? I need to move one over. Titus, choose your favorite animal, put it in the zoo while we look at our number and number word two. This is the number two, and this is the number word two. T-W-O is the number word two. Listen one more time. T-W-O is the number word two. So Victoria, tell me the number you see. Two. Two is correct. Oh, I like what you chose. Titus, students watching, would you have chosen the monkey just like Titus? All right, I'm ready to look at my next number. One of my favorite sports girls watching. How many bowling pins? And check their answer for us. Hayden, how many bowling pins? Three. I have three bowling pins. Now, I need a little bit of help though in my zoo. Do I have three animals in my zoo, Aslan? Yeah. No, I don't. How many do I have? Two. I have two, but I want three. How many more do I need, boys watching? And how many more do I need, Aslan? One. 
I need one more. So you choose your favorite animal and go ahead and put that in our zoo. And now we can see our number three and our number word three. T H R E E is the number word three. T H R E E is the number word three. Boys watching, remind me again, what's this number? And check their answer, Emery. Stand fast. Three. That's it, this is the number three. Now remind me again, how many animals are in my zoo? Ava. Three. I have three animals, but I want this number. Boys watching, how many bananas? And help me out, how many bananas do you see, Kobe? Stand fast. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. All right, Kobe, stay standing because I've got a thinking question for you. Do I have four animals in my zoo? How many do I have? Three. I have three, but I want four. How many more do I need? Two more. Oh, he says two more. Students watching, do you agree? And oh, Kobe, our students watching, they just shook their head no. Let's look over here and here's our three and here's our four. How many more do I have between three and four? This is the same, this is the same, this is the same. How many is extra? Zero. One more. One more. So how many more animals do I need, Kobe? One more. Move one more animal. While he does that, we're going to look at our number four and our number word four. This is our number four, and this is our number word four. F O U R is our number word for. F O U R is our number word for. And Benjamin, tell us the number we're looking at right here. What is it? Four. And Benjamin, stay standing. Let's count our animals in the zoo. You ready? One, two, three, four. I have four. Are all my animals in the zoo though, Benjamin? No. No, they're not. I wonder, could you help me? Because this is the next number I want to learn. How many grapes are on my card? Five. There's five grapes. And how many animals were in my zoo again? Four. I have four, I want five. How many more do I need? One. I do, why don't you move our last animal and we'll look at our number word five. This is the number five. F-I-V-E is the number word five. F-I-V-E. E is the number word five. So boys watching, tell me what number do you see? And check their answer for us, Tanner. What's our number? Five. Stand to answer. Five. And how many animals do we have in our zoo, Victoria? Um, five. Five is just right. All right, students watching, let's take a little bit of chance and let's practice some of the numbers that we've been learning together. You might have something very similar to us, but we are going to take just some sticks and we're going to use them to count. Maybe you have straws or maybe you have candies that you're counting, but I'd like for us to see if we can recognize numbers and apply it to objects. So students watching and boys and girls in our classroom, let's take the objects that we're going to count and let's move them just a little bit closer to our bodies so that we're ready to use them quickly. In a moment, I'm going to show you a number on my screen, and I want you to show me that number with what you have to count, whether it's sticks or straws or candies. Let's start with this first one. Notice this number, and students watching, boys and girls in the classroom, show me this number. Nice. Come up to the front, Ava, really quickly. I think Ava might have had it first. She's bringing up her stick. And Ava, how many sticks are in your hand? One. Good, show our students watching. Give them that smile. Good job. All right, let's go to our next one. Thanks, Ava. Here's our next number. Show me that number. Use those sticks and show me. Good, Hayden's really gathering them quickly. Got those sticks, Trey and Victoria. Nice, Emery. Emery, come on up to the front. And Emery, tell us the number of sticks that you have. Four. Good, give our students watching a nice smile. And students watching, I hope you had that number as well. All right, we're ready for our next number. Oh, that's a big one. Students watching, can you handle this one? Boys and girls in our classroom, did we get it? Wow, we've got some fast counters in here. 
Hayden is ready to share a smile. Hayden, come on up to the front. And Hayden, how many sticks are in your hand right now? All right, show off those sticks, show off that smile to our students watching. And students watching, I hope you did that the same as Hayden did. Good job, Hayden, you can have a seat. Here's our next number. Show me that number with those sticks. You are a fast lady. Savvy, did you find that number of sticks yet? Good. Nice. Victoria, come up to the front, ready to share those sticks and share a smile. Girls watching, you be showing off your things to count as well as Victoria. And Victoria, how many sticks do you have? Three. She's got three. I hope our girls and boys watching did too. Good job, Victoria. Let's try just one number, one more number. Show me that number. Good. Oh, check one more time, Kobe. There you go. Good. Kobe, come on up to the front, boys watching. You share off what you have as well with Kobe. Kobe, what's your number? Two. Two. Show our students watching and give them that nice smile. Good job, Kobe. You can have a seat. Fantastic. Now take those counters that you have and slide them back away from your body so we're ready to do something just a little bit different. Good. Already ready to go. Ari is a good listener. Students watching, are you ready to join us as well? Now, I'd like you to just tell me the number of animals that you see. Students watching, we'll begin with you. How many zebras do I have? And check their answer for us, Aslan. Two. Two is right, and there we can see the number two and the number word two. Let's move on to our monkeys. Help us with this one, Victoria. Saw that fast smile. Boys watching, answer with Victoria. Five. She says five boys watching. Did you agree? And Victoria, they said yes, they did. There's our number five and our number word five. Here's a flamingo. Titus is a flamingo fan. Girls watching, answer with Titus. One. One is correct. I have one flamingo. There's my number one and my number word one. Here's some tigers. You see those little cubs? Help us out, please, Trey. How many cubs do I have? Stand fast. Four. I have four students watching. Do you agree with Trey? And Trey, they said absolutely. Good job. You got it just right. Let's do one more with our big adult tigers. Tanner's got this one. Tanner, how many? Two. Wow, oh, check one more time. This is one more than two. Three. three is it. That's exactly it. I have my number three and my number word three as well. Now, I'd like you to count our animals. How many animals do you see girls watching? And check that answer for them, please. Aria. Four. She counts four girls watching. Is that how many animals you counted? You know what they said? They said count one more time, Aria. I think you can get it if you count again. Five. Five is it, and there we have our number five. Let's do another one. How many animals do you see boys watching? And Emery, let's check their answer. How many animals do you see? Three. Yes, there are three animals, and we can see our number three as well. Now over here, I brought a giraffe with me, and there's something a giraffe is known for being. A giraffe is very, 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 Tall. And my giraffe is not any different from other giraffes because he's tall. But I want you to notice something about my giraffe. If we go all the way down to the bottom, I see a number. What number are you seeing, students watching? And what number am I pointing to, Hayden? One. I am. And as I go up, 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 do my numbers get bigger or do they get smaller? Aslan? Bigger. They do get bigger until I get to the top. And boys watching, what's my last number next to my giraffe? And share with us that number, Ava. Five. Good. Let's think for a moment. Which number would be a bigger number? Would it be two or would it be four, girls watching? And check their answer. Which one is bigger, Emery, two or four? Four. four is a bigger number because I count four after I count the number two. Now, I'm ready for some help with some people in here. We're going to change them into a fun problem. Up to the front, I want Hayden to stand here. Hayden is going to be Mrs. Banks. So students watching, I introduce to you Hayden, who is now Mrs. Banks. Mrs. Banks is going to go to the zoo, but she is not going to go by herself. She is going to go with her three children. Let's have... Aria, you can be one of Mrs. Banks's children. Let's have Tanner come be one of her children and Emery come be her child too. So let's think for a moment. If Mrs. Banks and her three children went to the zoo, 
how many people went to the zoo, students watching? And check their answer. How many people went to the zoo, Benjamin? Four. Why don't we check and count just to be sure? Boys watching, count right along with Benjamin. One, two, three, four. Oh, you were faster than my hand. Let's try again. Boys watching, stay with my hand and Benjamin. One, two, three, four. Good. I had one mother and three children. That equals four. Good job. You can have a seat. Now, students watching and boys and girls in this classroom, in a moment, I'm going to give you a brand new direction. The direction I'm going to say is prepare for arithmetic. From now on in our arithmetic lessons, when I say the words prepare for arithmetic, you will get just your arithmetic paper and put it right in front of you ready to look at. Prepare for arithmetic. So my students, that paper that's right on top of our folder, you'll get it out and put it right on top. Nice. Savvy was one of my first people. Students watching, I'm going to hold up Savvy's arithmetic paper so you can see the front of it and check to make sure this is the paper you have in front of you. Now let's take just a moment and we're going to check this paper. One of our first directions said we needed to count the animals. So right now, students watching, boys and girls in the classroom, just in your head and silently count the animals that are on our zoo picture. I think we have an answer already. Students watching, why don't you answer first? And check their answer. How many animals do you see, Hayden? Five. She counted five animals. I hope that's what you counted as well. Go ahead and take your papers and turn it to the back. Now we're going to be ready to do some work together. So have your pencil in your hand. We've already written our names on the front of this paper. So our pencil is just ready to do some work. Our directions tell us to look at the animals in the zoo. Then we're going to count and circle how many of each animal you see. So take just a moment and look at that big zoo picture right underneath our directions and begin to notice those animals. The elephant, the giraffes, the bears, the penguins, and the monkeys. And I even see some toucans sitting on a zoo sign. Are you counting some animals there? All right, let's be ready to check those animals. The first animal I see is a brown animal. What brown animal do you see next to the green circle? What is that, Aria? Oh, he says grr. A bear. A bear. Let's look at our rectangle zoo picture. How many bears do you see, students watching? And how many bears did you see, Aria? Two. I saw two as well. Find the number two and circle it. Let's go across. There's that big gray animal. Savvy, what's the big gray animal that you see? Elephant. Let's look at our big rectangle picture and girls watching. How many elephants are there? And Savvy, check their answer. One. Just one. So circle the number one next to the elephant. Good job. All right, Victoria's favorite. Victoria, tell us that next animal. It's, it's a giraffe. And go back to our picture, Victoria, and tell me how many giraffes you see. Two. There are two. So find the number two and circle the number two. Good job. Nice, neat circles, Tanner. All right, Tanner is ready to check with our next animal on the second row. Tanner, what type of animal do you see? It is a penguin. Tanner, go to the rectangle picture and girls watching, you join in with Tanner. Count those penguins. And there's circles. And Tanner, how many penguins are there? Three. There are three. So find the number three and circle it next to the penguin. Savvy, you're doing a good job. Let's go to our next animal and Emery. Do you see what type of animal this is? What is that? Monkey. It is a monkey. Emery and boys watching, look at our big rectangle picture and let's find out how many monkeys are on that picture. So neat. All right, Emery and boys watching, how many monkeys are on that picture? Four. There are four, so find the number four and circle it. We've got one more animal. Why don't we do this one by ourselves? Find that animal, count them in your picture, and then circle that number. Love Emery's quiet counting. 
All right, students watching, first of all, tell me, what type of animal did you see? And check their answer. Titus, do you know what type of bird that is? It's a harder one. It's called a toucan. Why don't we say that together? Toucan. toucan. One more time. Toucan. Good. All right, and Titus and students watching, how many toucans were on our picture? Titus? Five. There were five, so you find that number five and circle it. Students watching, I want you to continue working on this paper with your on-site teacher. Students watching, welcome to our spelling and poetry time. Now we're going to spend the next few lessons together as first graders learning about poems. Now a poem is a very special story. There's something that makes it different from a normal story and we'll find out about that together. Now the first poem that I'd like us to learn together, I'm going to give you some clues about to see if you can figure out the type of animal our poem is talking about. Students watching and boys and girls in this classroom, listen to our clues and see if you can figure it out. Ready? First clue. This animal is big and gray. Okay, do you kind of have an idea? Next clue. He has a very long nose. Oh, I think I saw some of our students watching smile at me. I know I have some students in our classroom smiling at me. Last clue, this animal loves to eat peanuts. Okay, students watching, what is our new poem going to be about? And I think Benjamin knows the answer. Benjamin, what is our new poem going to be about? Elephant. It is, it's going to be about an elephant. Now in a moment, we're going to listen to our elephant poem. But first, let's take a little bit of time and let's talk about what a poem is. A poem has some special characteristics or things that make it different from other stories. One thing that a poem has is a poem has rhythm. Now a rhythm just means it has a beat. You ready? Listen carefully. All right, students watching and boys and girls in this classroom, did you hear the rhythm that I made with my hands? Listen again. Are you ready to make some rhythm or make a beat right with me? Students watching, boys and girls in this classroom, let's do that rhythm together. Wow, you did great, students watching and boys and girls in our classroom. Would you like to try a different rhythm? This time I'll only do it one time, so listen carefully. Ready? Try with me, students watching and boys and girls in our classroom. Good work. So a poem has rhythm, which is just a beat. It also has rhyme. A rhyme is special because a rhyme is a word that has the same ending sound. So if I gave a rhyming word for the word cat, I could say, bat. If I gave a rhyming word for the word corn, I could say more. Each of those words have the same ending sound. So a poem has rhythm, it has rhyme, and then it does something else. A poem paints a picture, but not with paint. It does it with words in our mind. So Victoria, you'll listen to some special words and these words will put a picture about what that poem is about in your mind. So a poem has rhythm, it has rhyme, and it paints a picture with words in your mind. Now let's listen to our new poem, The Elephant. Listen for the rhythm, find those rhyming words, and think about the picture these words paint in your mind. The Elephant, author unknown. The elephant walks like this and like that. He's very tall and he's very fat. He has no fingers, but he does have toes. And goodness gracious, what a nose. The elephant, author unknown. All right, students watching, remind us again, what poem, or what is our poem about what animal? And Hayden, what animals are poem about? 
An elephant. An elephant. Did you hear that rhythm in our poem? Kind of the beat of the words. The rhyme. Words like toes and nose. And then did it paint a picture with words in your mind? Now this time I want us to listen to the poem again. As you listen, listen to the words, but watch as I add some special motions to our poem. The elephant, author unknown. The elephant walks like this and like that. He's very tall and he's very fat. He has no fingers, but he does have toes. And goodness gracious, what a nose. The elephant, author unknown. All right, students watching, boys and girls in our classroom, stand up. Let's listen to the words of our poem again and let's do the, the motions. Elephant. Just author the motions. Unknown. The elephant walks like this and like that. He's very tall and he's very fat. He has no fingers, but he does have toes. And goodness gracious, what a nose. The elephant, author unknown. All right, we're ready to try this poem together. Students watching, join us with the words and the motions. I'll begin by saying just the title, and then you'll say the title author, and we'll say the poem together. The elephant, the elephant, author unknown. The elephant walks like this and like that. He's very tall and he's very fat. He has no fingers, but he does have toes. And goodness gracious, what a nose. The elephant, author unknown. Good start, let's try again. The elephant, the elephant, author unknown. The elephant walks like this and like that. He's very tall and he's very fat. He has no fingers, but he does have toes. And goodness gracious, what a nose. The elephant, author unknown. You can have a seat. Students watching will continue to work on our brand new poem, The Elephant. Students watching, we're ready to begin our first lesson of combination practice. Now, here's what I want you to do whenever there's a combination lesson. I want you to take the time to really focus on the things that we're practicing, whether it's counting or working on addition or subtraction. The faster you are with those skills, the better you're going to be as we work in combination practice and also in our arithmetic lessons. Now in our arithmetic lesson, we went and we visited a certain place. And the place that we visited was, do you see again students watching and boys and girls in our classroom where we visited? And Savvy, where did we go visit? The zoo. We did, we went to visit the zoo. And at the zoo, we call, saw all kinds of zoo animals. But one of my favorite things to do was we walk along this very long path into this number. And girls watching, what number did we count to? And check their answer. Aslan, what's our last number on our zoo picture? 20. We did, we counted all the way to the number 20. But where did we begin? What is this number right here, Emory? One. What is it? One. one is correct, so we counted from one all the way to the number 20. Why don't we have our boys and girls in the classroom and students watching stand up? Oh, that was slow, sit down. Ready? Stand. That was great. Now we're ready to take a long trip around the zoo. Let's count from one to 20 together. One, two, three. you can have a seat but let's see if we can try something just a little bit different do you remember what we practiced earlier how this hand is my girl's hand so girls and girls watching stand up that was nice 
But since that is my girl's hand, girls and girls watching sit, then this is my boy's hand. Good job, boys and boys watching. You can sit down. We're going to start counting. I'm not even going to use my pointer because I think that you can follow the path without my pointer. But this is what I'm going to do. Sometimes I'll do this. Oh, I had my girls watching. Stan, where are the girls in my classroom? There you go. Sometimes I'll do this. That was fast, boys and boys watching. And sometimes I'll do this. Nice, that's everyone. You can have a seat. Why don't we start with boys and boys watching? Boys and boys watching, we'll start with our number one, but watch those hands. It might be your turn next. Here we go, boys and boys watching together. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. And everyone can have a seat. That was a good start. Why don't we practice that again? Let's start this time with girls and girls watching. Girls and girls watching, let's begin with the number one together. One, one two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Nice job. You can have a seat. And we counted all the way around our zoo picture. What was the last number on our zoo picture students watching? And check their answer savvy. Um, Stand fast. What's this number? Uh, 11. Oh, careful, don't guess at it. Notice as we count all the way around, what number is a two in the tens place and a zero in the ones place? Um, um, the 12 family. Why don't we do this? Savvy, you stay standing, and girls watching, you join Savvy, and we're going to count until we get to that number. You can do it. Come on, Savvy and girls watching. One, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. You did it! What number is this, Savvy? Twenty. Yes! When we have a two in the tens place and a zero in the ones place, it's twenty. Girls watching, thanks for counting with Savvy Savvy. I'm proud of you. You figured that out. That is our number 20. Well, let's take just a moment and let's look at some of our numbers. Boys watching, tell me the number you see on this card. And check their answer for us, Benjamin. One. I need someone who's a sharp thinker who can tell me the number that is one more than one. Girls watching, start for us. And Aria, what number is one more than one? What number do I count next? Stand fast. Here's our number one. What is one more than one? One. Oh, careful, this is one. What comes next? Two. Two is one more than one, so this is our next number. What number should I count next, boys watching? And what number is one more than two, Tanner? Three is correct. What number is one more than three, Emery? Four. Yes, and what number is one more than four, Hayden? Five. Perfect job. I'm gonna do something though. I'm gonna mix up these numbers and I'm going to need people help me to get into a number line. A number line means I start with the first number and go all the way to the number that's the biggest. Benjamin, come up to the front and hold this card for me. Now, is Benjamin going to be the first number in my number line, boys watching? And Benjamin, here's your number. Are you the first number in my line? No. No, he isn't. So just hold that number and he's going to have to wait. Here's our next number. Titus, come on up to the front. And Titus, do you think he knows where he needs to go? Oh, he seems pretty confident and sure. I like that, Titus. Let's go to this number here, Victoria. Tell me the number you see. 
five. Okay, Victoria, come hold this about where you think it should go for our number line. Girls watching, kind of tell Victoria where to go. She's going close to the end. What do you think? Good choice. What about this number here? Why don't we have Emery come up to the front? And, oh, Emery's going right here. What about my last number? Come up to the front, Hayden. And Hayden, show me where this needs to go. Pretty smile on Aria's face. I like it. Okay, Aria, are you ready to check? Girls watching, let's check with Aria. Let's see if we got our numbers in the right order. Aria, count. One, two, three, four, five. And what do you think? Students watching, did we get our numbers in the correct order? They're all shaking their heads yes. Good job, Aria, and we'll keep working on these numbers for combination practice. Students watching, we're ready to begin our very first activity lesson. Now, I think that you're going to enjoy activity time as much as I do. Because during activity time, we're going to get to do so many different things. In fact, sometimes we'll travel around the United States. We'll even go and we'll visit other countries. We'll discover God's world and God's creation together. We'll even find ways to keep our bodies healthy and we'll learn history about our country and other countries as well. We also will get to do special art projects together, things that are fun and that you get to keep and share with those around you. But our activity time for this lesson is one of my favorite things because we get to learn some fun songs together, songs we'll learn together and songs you can share with other people as well. Now for this activity time, I brought somebody pretty special with me. I brought a friend. And this friend sometimes helps us learn our songs together in activity time. Now, students watching and boys and girls in this classroom, are you ready to welcome our friend into our classroom and into our homes? You think so? Okay, here's the first thing I want you to do. Are you in chair check position? I have to tell you, students watching, Aslan didn't even have to move. She was so straight and tall, but the best part was her smile. She shared it with me, and now I'm going to share a smile with our students watching and everyone in our classroom. Are we ready to welcome our friend who's going to help us learn so many songs? Here we go. Hey there, Uncle Dave here along with the Friendship Gang. Say hi, gang. Hi. We were just about to begin singing some songs together. But first, I have a very special guest that I want you to meet. He's from way far away, and his name is Pal Penguin. Hi, Pal! Hi, Uncle Dave. Hi, Friendship Gang. Oh, I am so excited to be here. I have wanted to visit for a long time. You know, it's so cold where I'm from, and it's so warm here in this clubhouse. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're glad you like the clubhouse, Pal. We're just excited that you've come for a visit. Hey, while you're here, would you help us sing our songs? Oh, the songs. I love to sing songs. I have a very good voice. Listen, home, home on the rain. <laughs> well, it sounds like you're ready to go, pal. Let's get started right now. Yes, sir, Uncle Dave. Okay, students watching, boys and girls in the classroom, we've met Uncle Dave. We've met the Friendship Gang, and most importantly, we've met Pal the Penguin. Do you feel the way that Pal does? Do you like to sing as much as he does? Well, I do, and I'm ready for us to begin to learn to some fun new songs together. Now, for our songs, they might some of them be familiar to you, but students watching and boys and girls in this classroom, the first time we do a song, I'll do the motions and we'll all listen to the words. Go ahead and join me as we do the motions and listen to the words along with me. Here's our first song, London Bridge, join me with motion. London Bridge is falling down, falling down, falling down. London Bridge is falling down, my fair lady. Build it up with iron bars, iron bars, iron bars. Build it up with iron bars, my fair lady. Love these motions. Build it up with sticks and stones, sticks and stones, sticks and stones. Build it up with sticks and stones, my fair lady. Oh, students watching, I love seeing you do those motions. Boys and girls in this classroom, isn't class singing time fun already? Students watching, boys and girls in the classroom, stand up and let's sing London Bridge. Be ready to do motions and sing. 
London Bridge is falling down, falling down, falling down. London Bridge is falling down, my fair lady. Build it up with iron bars, iron bars, iron bars. Build it up with iron bars, my fair lady. Sticks and stones, sticks and stones, sticks and stones. Build it up with sticks and stones, my fair lady. Song, I'm going to be looking for some helpers in the classroom because we're going to learn a song about five little chickadees. Listen carefully and watch and do the motions with me. Five little chickadees sleeping at the door. One flew away and then there were four. Chickadee, chickadee, happy at play. Chickadee, chickadee, fly away. Four little chickadees sitting in a tree. One flew away and then there were three. Chickadee, chickadee, happy at play. Chickadee, chickadee, fly away. Three little chickadees looking at you. One flew away and then there were two. Chickadee, chickadee, happy at play. Chickadee, chickadee, fly away. Two little chickadees sitting in the sun. One flew away and then there was one. Chickadee, chickadee, happy at play. Chickadee, chickadee, fly away. One little chickadee left all alone. It flew away and then there were none. Chickadee, chickadee, happy at play. Chickadee, chickadee, fly away. Hey, students watching, I hope you enjoyed listening to that song as much as we did, but I'm ready for some helpers to come up to the front. Now, remind me again, how many chickadees were in our song? Students watching? And I think Savvy might remember. Savvy, how many chickadees did we have? Five. All right, Savvy's going to come up to the front. She's going to be our very first chickadee. Savvy, you come stand right here. Oh, do I have enough chickadees right now? What do you think? Aslan, do I have enough? No, I don't. Why don't we have Aslan come up to the front? Am I done? Do I have my five chickadees yet? Hayden, is this enough? No, she says no. So Hayden's going to come stand right here. What do we think? Titus, is this enough? No. All right, Titus, come up to the front. Now I've done it. Right, Trey? Do we have our five chickadees? No, we don't. We need Trey to come up. And now students watching, you check to see if we have our five chickadees. And what do you think, Victoria? Did we do it? Yes. We did, and good checking and good counting from Victoria's students watching. I know that you did the same. Now, this is what we're going to do. Our chickadees are going to sing right along with our students watching and boys and girls in the classroom, but as they leave, they can go right back to their seats and join us in their singing as well. We'll stay seated, but let's sing our song, Five Little Chickadees. Love those eyes, Victoria. Five little chickadees peeping at the door. One flew away and then there were four. Chickadee, chickadee, happy at play. Chickadee, chickadee, fly away. Four little chickadees sitting in a tree. One flew away and then there were three. Chickadee, chickadee, happy at play. Chickadee, chickadee, fly away. Three little chickadees looking at you. One flew away and then there were two. Chickadee, chickadee, happy at play. Chickadee, chickadee, fly away. Two little chickadees sitting in the sun. One flew away and then there was one. Chickadee, chickadee, happy at play. Chickadee, chickadee, fly away. did we have left in our song at the very end, Emery? Zero. Zero is correct. Next time, make sure you're standing. 
we're ready for our next song, and it's a brand new song. It's called Riggedy Jig. Listen and watch the motions. So fast, so fast, my horse can go. Oh, Riggedy, Riggedy Jig, you know. He's just the branch of a willow tree. Oh, Riggedy Jig, you see. All right, did you listen to the words of our song? Am I riding on a real horse in our song? Think about that as we stand, and I want you to listen to the words again and join me with the motions. So just listen to the words, just the motions. So fast, so fast, my horse can go. Oh, riggity, riggity jig, you know. He's just the branch of a willow tree. Oh, riggity jig, you see. All right, stay standing. And students watching, are we riding a real horse in the song, Riggity Jig? And Ava, what do you think? Are we riding a real horse? No. No, we're riding, imagining on just a tree branch. Maybe you've done that before. Now we're ready to sing and do the motions to our new song, Riggedy Jig. So fast, so fast, my horse can go. Oh, Riggedy, Riggedy Jig, you know. He's just the branch of a willow tree. Oh, Riggedy Jig, you see. Good start, but let's sing it again. Students watching, stay standing with us. Get that branch. So fast, so fast, my horse can go. Oh, riggity, riggity jig, you know. He's just the branch of a willow tree. Oh, riggity jig, you see. Guys, you can have a seat. We'll keep working on that song together. Now, our next song is a song that I hope you enjoy doing at home and in the classroom. It's called Fun to Be a Helper. Listen to the job. Let's do the motions. It's fun to be a helper, a helper, a helper. It's fun to be a helper just any time. Oh, I can set the table, the table, the table. Oh, I can set the table at dinner time. Oh, I can dry the dishes, the dishes, the dishes. Oh, I can dry the dishes and make them shine. All right, ready to rake some leaves. Oh, I can rake the dead leaves, the dead leaves, the dead leaves So I can rake the dead leaves in autumn time The good helpers in this classroom and students watching, I could see you helping as well. Let's everyone stand up and we'll sing our song and do the motion, Fun to be a Helper. It is fun to obey. It's fun to be a helper, a helper, a helper. It's fun to be a helper just any time. Oh, I can set the table, the table, the table. Oh, I can set the table at dinner time. Dry the dishes. Oh, I can dry the dishes, the dishes, the dishes. Oh, I can dry the dishes and make them shine. Break the dead leaves. Oh, I can rake the dead leaves, the dead leaves, the dead leaves. So I can rake the dead leaves in autumn time. Great job, have a seat. Students watching, what's one way that you're a helper at home? And help me out. Trey, how do you help at home sometimes? Remember, stand to answer. I like help my daddy clean sometimes. Yeah, so we can help dad around the house with different jobs. I hope that you're a good helper just at home and in the classroom. Well, our next song is an important song because it's a patriotic song about our country. Listen to the words of My Country Tis of Thee. My country tis of thee, sweet land of liberty, of thee I sing. Land where my fathers died, land of the pilgrim fight, from every mountainside, let freedom Students watching, did you notice what I was doing with my hands? Since there's not motions to go with this patriotic song, I was just directing with my hands. So you can just watch me as I direct with my hands. But we're ready now to sing. So everyone stand. Your hands can be right by your side as we sing our patriotic song, My Country Tis of Thee. My country tis of thee, sweet land of liberty, of thee I sing. Land where my father's died. Every mountain 
Excellent, you can have a seat and we're coming up to one of my favorite songs for this lesson. It's about an animal that loves to live in the water. Can you think of what it might be? Let me give you one more clue. It says quack, quack. Did you get it, students watching? And what type of animal is our song about Victoria? It's a duck. It is, it's called Little Ducky Duddle. Listen to the words and do the motions with me. A little ducky duddle went wading in a puddle, went wading in a puddle, quite small, quack, quack. Said he, it doesn't matter how much I splash and splatter, I'm only a ducky after all, quack, quack. I like those ducks. <laughs> Look at them waddle. <laughs> Are you ready to stand? Students watching, join us and let's sing this fun song, Little Ducky Daddle. A little ducky daddle went waiting in a puddle, went waiting in a puddle, quite small, quack, quack. Said he, it doesn't matter how much I splash and splatter, I'm only a ducky after all, quack, quack. I like those ducks. <laughs> Look at him waddle. <laughs> bye bye, ducks. <laughs> Did a good job with that song. Now, our next song is one of my favorite songs we get to sing in class singing. It's about somebody who has an important job. I want you to listen carefully to what job he has and if it's an easy one or hard. Like a little shoemaker. Listen and watch the motions. There's a little wee man in a little wee house lives over the way you see And he sits at the window and sews all day making shoes for you and me A rap a tap tap a rap a tap tap to the hammer's tick tap tee A rap a tap tap a rap a tap tap making shoes for you and me He puts his needle in and out his thread flies to and fro with his tiny all he bores the holes till the hammer's busy blow. A rap a tap tap, a rap a tap tap, do the hammer's tick tap tee. A rap a tap tap, a rap a tap tap, making shoes for you and me. Okay, well, some people doing the motions already. Students watching, what job does the person in our song have? And what job did he have, Benjamin? What does he make? Shoes? He does. He makes shoes. Do you think it's an easy job? No. I don't think so either. I think it takes a lot of practice and hard work, but it's worth it. Do you work hard at every job? Let's listen to this song again and do just the motions. So listening, but ready with our hands. There's a little wee man in a little wee house lives over the way you see. And he sits at the window and shows all day making shoes for you and me. Rap a tap tap, a rap a tap tap, do the hammer's tick tap tee. A rap a tap tap, a rap a tap tap, making shoes for you and me. He puts his needle in and out his thread flies to and fro. With his tiny all he bores the holes till the hammer's busy blow. A rap a tap tap, a rap a tap tap, do the hammer's tick tap tee. A rap a tap tap, a rap a tap tap, making shoes for you and me. Go ahead and stand up, students watching, join us, and let's sing our new song, The Little Shoemaker. We'll do the motions as well. There's a little wee man in a little wee house, lives over the way you see. And he sits at the window and shows all day, making shoes for you and me. A rap a tap tap. To and fro, with his tiny all he bores the holes till the hammer's busy blow. A rap a tap tap, a rap a tap tap, do the hammer's tick tap tee. A rap a tap tap, a rap a tap tap, making shoes for you and me. Students watching, I'm looking forward to the many songs we'll learn together.